Hi, Libra. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2021. This month begins with a focus on work, which shifts to a focus on relationships. And a work focus is usually best addressed in a mission orders reading, while a relationship focus is usually best addressed in a lifelong love reading. But you being Libra, you probably don't want to have to choose, so you might want to get a natal and transit reading. Hmm. Well, Saturn is super busy this year, traveling along through the sign of Aquarius, which means it's in your fifth house, most likely, or if you have early, or if you have late Libra rising, it might actually fall in your fourth house. So I'll say a little bit about each. Um, when Saturn is traveling through your fifth house, um, there, you may feel like you're really limited and constricted in how you can have fun, how you can recreate. And also, it's a great time to take your creativity seriously. Um, you might even be able to turn it into a job, actually, uh, during a transit like this one. So there's some interesting thoughts. If Saturn is in your fourth house, um, maybe because you use, you know, the Placidus system to make your chart, then you may be feeling some restriction and constriction on the home front. Um, it can be due to something physical, like there's construction going on in your home or on the street outside, and you feel kind of like uh, home just isn't as cozy as it should be. But the great news about Saturn is that if you apply yourself, you can really move the needle on anything that Saturn is restricting. So your home could be a much better place after this year if you put in an effort. It could be a lot cozier because you made it that way. So um, Mercury, Venus, and Mars are up to some stuff this month. What's, uh, what's up with that for oh. Libra, Julia? Well, hey, Libra, I'll tell you what's up with it. Mars, the planet of action and activity. Um, it starts the month in Taurus, but by March 3rd, very, very early on, it, it moves into Gemini, which is your ninth house. This is the house of travel. This is the house of education. Um, so with Mars here, you're going to be wanting to kind of get out and do something new, maybe have an adventure, maybe go rock climbing, maybe travel. But if there are circumstances which are holding you back, like a job or travel, restrictions or other types of things, you might get really, really frustrated and stir crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you're in school, you know, you might write, run into some issues with your learning, especially with teachers or other people in the institution, school administrations and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, which can, you know, Mars is a little bit conflict prone. So good to remember. And then Mercury, the planet of communication and the planet of mentation starts the month in Aquarius, which is your fifth house. And it's still reverberating from the Mercury retrograde cycle from last month. And if you want to hear more about how that affects you, I suggest you check out our videos from then. But by March 6, uh, Mercury is going to be back up to its regular speed. And that's when we really kind of consider the Mercury retrograde cycle complete. Um, so still could be a little bit of squirreliness in the first week of March around communications. However, while it's in your fifth house, this is the house of children. This is the house of games, uh, procreation, recreation, and creation. <laughs> and um, with Mercury here, Mercury is a little bit of a trickster planet. It loves to play games. Your mind could be just super stimulated by whatever games and diversions you have, whether that's planning a creative project, whether that's uh, playing video games or role-playing games or board games. Um, you'll be kind of mentally stimulated in those areas. Then on March 15th, Mercury is going to move into your sixth house. Mercury likes to be in this house. This is a house of organization. So I highly suggest that this will be a great time to really get focused on on um, organizing whatever structures or systems in your life, whether that's cleaning up your hard drive or your cloud, or even just good old fashioned going through your uh, Tupperware cabinets and getting things all nice and tidy. Um, then Venus, uh, the planet of art, beauty, relationships, she begins the month also in the sixth house. So you might actually even have fun organizing a little bit too. <laughs> um, and um, while she's in the sixth house, it's also a wonderful time to be getting along well with the people that you work with, because uh, mm. the sixth house rules your job too. So that's customers, that's coworkers, that's bosses. Uh, so nice time for that. And then Venus uh, moves into your seventh house on March 21st, and she loves being in the seventh house because it's the house of partnership. So if you're in a relationship, you can expect to be having some nice dates with your partner, a little bit more harmony, less arguments, more working together well. Um, 
Um, and if you're not in a relationship, then it's a really great time to get out there because it'll give you a little extra dating luck. Mm. Lovely. And Venus is involved with both of this month's moons. The first of them happens on the 13th. And that is a new moon in Pisces, which falls in that sixth house of yours that has to do with work, health, service, and personal organization. So it's going to bring um, a sense of the new, a feeling of new beginnings, a lot of energy into that house. Uh, with Venus and Mercury present, uh, Mercury is about to move in there, but lots of activity in the sixth house this month. And so that's the work theme, you know, a lot of attention on your workplace and bringing your best to it and enjoying your relationships within it. So um, we've named this moon dreams of partnership because Venus is involved and also because it's in Pisces. And so it's going to have to do with the themes of dreaming and imagination. There's a square to Juno that makes it a little challenging, uh, particularly around relationships. But I think that, you know, if you bring a little fairness and a little compassion, probably get through it just fine. Later in the month on the 28th, we have a full moon in Libra. So once again, the relationship themes are pretty big, partially because that moon is in Libra itself, which is very much the relationship oriented sign, but also because Venus is here once again involved with this moon by being conjunct the sun and it's in your own seventh house. So I would say this month, the themes really start out being involved with work and then they pivot pretty hard into the relationship department. Um, working on finding what's fair, uh, processing big emotions, and, um, and really dealing with, you know, when you might have that feeling that things have kind of gotten out of balance, and finding ways to bring them back into balance that are, you know, peaceful and not warlike. Um, so then we have the equinox too, which I'd like to mention, and that happens on the 20th. And uh, that's when the sun moves into Aries and it's really the beginning of the year and it's the beginning of the first sign of the year, which is the fire sign of Aries. And there's that big feeling of uh, freshness and rebirth and newness and the excitement and the rising energy of spring. Uh, we think that you should do something about this and that this month is a great time to do something big and the main reason is because there are no outer planets retrograde at all this month and what that means is that anything that you begin is going to not have some certain varieties of self-sabotage built right into it instead it's all systems go so this is a really good month to you know buy that car to uh, sign that lease, to start that business, you know, buy that rental property, whatever it is that you want to do, this is a really good month for doing it. And uh, along those lines, uh, I'd like to give you this. Hey, there's Pacuna parking away, guarding the house from her position as the very tiny dog, <laughs> like she does. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from Goethe, which you've heard before, but, um, but I think now is a really good time for it. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. And uh, um, yeah, I'm going to leave you with that. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And visit our uh, Pandora Astrology channel on YouTube where you can find the news of the month and the news of the year and your horoscope gathered together in playlists. And also find us on the web at PandoraAstrology.com where you can get a reading or even take a class. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.